Hi, my name's Nicola White. I'm a mudlarkin artist and I'm here today with Tamazin Rhymes who works on environmental community projects and she's also an associate with the Climate Museum UK. Hi Tamazin, thank you very much for meeting me here today. Yeah. A climate museum, so what is a climate museum? Can you tell us a little bit about it please? Certainly, so Climate Museum is a CIC that was formed in 2019 by a lady called Bridget McKenzie and Victoria Burns and they um, put together a group of ideas to get people involved across the cultural industries and um, particularly cultural institutions like museums, hence the museum in the title, and to share the collections they'd put together, encourage other people to form collections around climate and to involve people in discussions about how to look at existing collections in museums from a climate perspective. A climate museum, it's the first time I've heard of such a thing and as you're an associate of this climate museum, perhaps you would be a really good person to ask to explain in simple terms what is climate change? Climate change is a big subject and a big area and uh, quite complicated so understandably people don't understand you know, all the different areas but basically it's the way the planet is uh, changing, warming as it is currently, over time. So the difference between climate change or climate emergency as we tend to refer to it um, and weather, weather is day to day, sun, rain, whatever's, you know, whatever's going on at the moment and climate change is the longer term process of the heating of the planet. How do we know that climate change is because of human activity? I mean, and, and just not a natural cycle of the earth or the planet. How do we know? How do we know that? Well, thanks to a great deal of scientific research, which has been going on for several hundred years in different forms, but a huge development in that recently, um, we can measure everything from ice cores to the temperature of uh, bodies of water, rivers, oceans, um, and uh, changing weather patterns. Um, NASA do a lot of work tracking things from space. So there's all sorts of people, scientists looking at different um, facets of the Earth um, and recording that change over time. And there are some um, really enlightening graphs showing the change, um, both you know longer term over hundreds of years of the sort of cyclical nature of the changes in climate but also the much more recent change um, which a lot of people refer to as the hockey stick graph because it goes like this and then it just does that and it's this section here that's the worrying part because that's very recent um, the other way you see it recorded is through the climate stripes so this okay. time of year Show us you, your get, you get climate stripes day so this is all about the change from 1850 which is obviously a lot of people know for the industrial revolution so this is what the temperature the average temperature across the planet looked like and then we get to the 2020s and you start to see it shift from blue to red um, really quite abruptly and it's the abruptness of that change and the, the amount of change that is the concerning factor. Right. Now I know as a museum you like to encourage conversations around climate change, but why do you think we need to have conversations about climate change? Why do you think we need to talk about it? Actually talking about it, um, an awful lot of people have agreed, lots of different surveys, Project Drawdown, all sorts of other groups talking about it is the most important thing we can do. So whether it's uh, reading articles, looking into the science, getting educated yourself, talking to your children, your family, your friends at work, those conversations are what are going to get us all to understand um, what changes we can make ourselves and what uh, areas we need to look at system change, government, um, you know, people running companies, the different levels of change that we need. So talking about it is incredibly important. What would you advise, what can you advise to people that they can do to address the, the climate change crisis? I mean, how can they help? What individual actions can we take to make a difference? Well, there are lots of different ways of learning about the science. And once you understand some of the science, um, it's much easier to talk to other people. Um, you can be a lot more confident in what you're saying and a lot more comfortable with having those conversations because they're not always easy. People do get quite defensive about it. 
um, but there are some brilliant groups offering uh, free education online. You can do carbon literacy training, you can do climate fresk training. Um, there are lots of quite fun ways to get some climate knowledge these days. Okay, and are there any individual actions that people can take on, on the day-to-day -day basis? Well, having those conversations um, with family and friends, encouraging them to try a vegan meal or try oat milk instead of dairy, um, keep their clothes in use longer, take the bike instead of the car if they're going on a short journey. Uh, there are all sorts of little changes that we can make, but a lot of it is about using our voices, talking to friends and family, letting your MP know what you care about, talking to your local councillor. Those conversations are what will make the biggest difference. OK, well, thank you very much, Tamazin. Just one last question. I have noticed, um, I've been doing a little series of videos about climate change recently, and I have noticed that it does tend to evoke a very strong response from people, positive and also in a way that, well, I don't know, it just evokes a strong response, let's say. I mean, have you got any insight into why that might be? Um, it does, it comes from a few different reasons, but it is very common. Um, some of it is fear of the unknown, what, what's going to happen. Um, you know, we all live on Earth and there's no getting away from that. So whatever happens to the planet is going to affect us all in one way or another. Um, and that's, that's quite a big scary thought. A lot of people would rather push that aside. And a lot of people think that if there is something that big and frightening going on, then the government will be doing something about it. And so they don't really want to face up to the fact that that's not, sadly, it's not currently happening. Right, OK, well, thanks for that. Now, um, where can people find out more about the Climate Museum? Uh, so the easiest way is go to the website, which is www.climatemuseumuk.org. And we're also on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all of those. Great. Well, I'll put all those links in the description to this video. So thank you for watching, everyone. As always, I appreciate your comments and your feedback. It's always great to hear from you, but keep it polite. And thank you so much, Tamsin, for coming here to talk to us today. You're very welcome. <laughs>